to him. Uh, Tim Tottles, what is your opinion on Gematria? Is it the code of the simulacrum? Well, it very well could be, because people who are very versed in Gematria have shown me some very profound things, and I can't argue against them. They're, they're absolutely correct that the geometrical value of certain words and terms and phrases are what they are and how they, and how they correlate. Now, Gematria, like anything else, can be abused. You can start applying it to everything and making sense of everything when it's all entirely subjective. However, there are incidents where where we know that Gematria has absolute value, such as in the biblical text of Isaiah, we have a passage in Isaiah chapter 19, verses 18 and 19, where there's a very obscure passage that over 250 years ago, many researchers claimed was referring to the Great Pyramid of Egypt, and it refers to an altar an altar in the land of Egypt at the border thereof. It was a sign and a testimony and a witness unto mankind of the great works of God, and it was put in the land of Egypt, but at the border. Well, that description is of the Great Pyramid, which is in the land of Egypt, but it's also at the border. Because if anybody looks at a map and looks at the location of Giza and the Great Pyramid, it is at the, it is exactly 108 miles away from the Mediterranean, but it's at the border of the Delta. The delta is the ancient Egyptian Nine Bows region. It's called Goshen. Goshen was an area of the Nine Bows. So, Great Pyramid is at the border of that, where, where true Egypt is, because on the other side of that is Goshen, going all the way to the Mediterranean, which used to be underwater. That's how, that's how the Egyptian delta was formed, not by the Nile. The Nile flows in the exact opposite direction of every other river in the entire world passing over the, over the equator. That's because that entire area at one time was at a different elevation. The Great Pyramid for over 350 years was underwater. This is why, because of the casing stones that protected the Great Pyramid and the other two pyramids, they, the white limestone casing blocks were removed by the Muslims. That's why the pyramids look the way they look today. But in 820 AD, when the Great Pyramid was entered by Al Mamon and explored, and they, they discovered the King's Chamber and the Grand Gallery and all that, back then, the pyramid was still looking like it was adorned in white, glistening 144,000 ca uh, uh, casing stones because it was still 500 years before the earthquakes during the, the period of the seven comets over Europe and the great black comet of 1314. It was during that period that massive earthquakes dislodged the casing stones on the Great Pyramid. And I'm not making any of this up. This is all in the historical record. There's many, many Muslim authors that were talking about those earthquakes during the period of the seven comets. And it dislodged them. And that's when the Muslims realized, man, we got all this building material. So they took all this building material and they sent hundreds, maybe thousands of workers up the steps of the Great Pyramid. And they started breaking apart all this white limestone that was protecting the Great Pyramid. And they, they hauled it all away. And you know where that rock went. It's called the city of Cairo. They built Cairo out of the casing blocks. They broke it all up into any pieces they could use, and it shaped them and built, built mosques, and they built uh, administration buildings, and they used a lot of the rubble under their under the underground so they could build streets on top of it because it's a shifting desert. Now, this is why the Sphinx, which never had casing stones, looks like it's so weathered by water. This is why it looks so terrible, like it's been like it's been underwater for a long period of time, because it was. It was under the Mediterranean for 340 years. From the uh, collapse of the vapor canopy in 2239 BC caused by the Phoenix, 340 years the Sphinx was under the Mediterranean, all the way to the year 1899 BC, when a great earthquake shoved northern Egypt about 70 feet in the air where it is today. This is why the oldest traditions about the kingdom of Waset in Egypt, Egypt had a very specific, very old name. That name was not Egypt and it wasn't Kemet. Egypt was called the Raised Land. Again, I'm not making, up the, making this up. Professor Waddell and many other, many other minds greater than me all cite these sources.